Hello, my name's John Arnold, and I'm back with another video looking at the brand new product from MacFun Software called Intensify Pro. And today we're going to work on this rather dull looking uh, plate of sushi. Let's jump into Intensify. And I'm going to work on the original because this is already a TIFF file. So just give that a second to open up. And obviously the very first thing I'm going to need to do with this image is to brighten it up because we've, it, it was clearly underexposed when I took it. I got the exposure wrong. Now, I don't really want to brighten up everything. I just want to brighten up the actual, uh, <coughs> the actual food here. So I'm going to do an exposure adjustment on our first... So we've got our first layer here. I'm going to go into the adjustment section and I'm going to drag my exposure slider up until the food looks pretty good. And I'm going to just paint that adjustment using the paintbrush tool here. Uh, I'm going to make the biggest brush I can uh, by using the right square bracket key to make that brush bigger. And then I'm going to hold the shift key down and the left square bracket key to make the softest edge brush I can. And I'm going to just paint that over the food. Now that's pretty good, but it's a bit hard to see where I've hit. So I'm going to use the show button here that lets me see the layer mask I've painted. And I can see that I missed a bit in the middle there. So that's pretty good. <clears throat> and I can also see that I over overshot the edge a little bit there. So I'm going to use my eraser brush now and just tidy up that edge and bring that brightening just onto the food, which is where I want it. There we go. So I've tidied up my mask, I can click the show button again to turn that mask off. And now that I've got that looking right, I can tweak my exposure until the food is looking well lit. So that's pretty good. The other next thing I wanted to do was just to brighten up some of the colours a bit because this salmon in these rolls here are looking is looking a little bit uh, um, uh, insipid. So I'm going to use the saturation slider just to drag that saturation up a little just to make those that salmon stand out and look a little bit more vibrant and the same with the prawns here so let's add a new layer now because the next thing I want to do is work on the detail and this is what this video is really about I wanted to get into some of the detail enhancing structure enhancing sliders and you can see I'm working almost exclusively in the adjustment section now because we really are getting into the meat of how uh, Intensify actually does its work so let's zoom in to 100% and I'm just going to hold down the spacebar and drag up so that we're looking at the area of the image with the most detail this is where I'm interested in, in really bringing this detail out this rice here and on these prawns here um, this is where I really want that detail to start to sing so I'm going to come down in the uh, uh, in the sliders of the adjustment section to the structure and details section and you can see that the structure is going to be what gives us a little bit more structure in the uh, the grains of rice here and obviously this is white stuff so it's going to be in the highlight section so I'm going to work mostly with the highlight sliders here so I'm going to just start off by dragging the highlight structure slider all the way up now if we want to see how an individual section affects the image we can do that by ticking the tick box here next to structure that turns this whole section on and off and you can see straight away that this is starting to give us some structure on the uh, on the grains of rice there we can start playing with the strength slider here if we really want to boost that up, uh, effect up <coughs> And we can also affect the size of the things that it affects. I think this is a, a, the equivalent. Uh, now, I don't have any inside knowledge on this, but my reading of how this works is it's a bit like the equivalent of the radius slider in an unsharp mask, I think. So what this is doing is, is going to change the size of the details that, that it emphasizes. So this structure works a lot like a clarity slider, if you're used to the clarity slider in something like Lightroom. And we can affect how strongly that is, a, is applied through both the slider for the highlights and the strength slider, which just seems to sort of boost or, or uh, throttle back on whatever you've uh, whatever you've done with the main sliders up here. So I think that's probably pretty good. I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave that strong. I'm gonna leave it strong because we can back it off later with our layer opacity. So having done that with our structure, let's just see how that's how that's working. That's that's working nicely just to bring the detail out on on the rise here. And um, 
And I'm not too concerned, by the way, with the fact that we're starting to get what looks like uh, loss of detail and perhaps even overexposure up here. It, this is this is uh, sort of specular highlights. These are reflected light off the surface of the food. It's okay if they if they do start to blow out a little. It just makes everything look shiny and bright and uh, and uh, you know sort of uh, vibrant. So don't fret too much about over or underexposure. Um, at least not not when we're in this editing world. Um, I'm going to go to the details section now. Now this is going to work more like a sharpening than a clarity, I think. So what we're going to do is we need to find the slider that affects the uh, the right size of detail that we're working on. Now I, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be large, so let's just try our medium slider and see if that does anything for us. Now I could, if I turn this detail section on and off, I can see that it is working for us pretty well. Let's just turn that off and try our small slider and see what that does for us. Now, if you look there carefully, you might not be able to see on the video, but that's actually sharpening the grain in the image now, so I definitely don't want small. Let's just quickly try large and see if large does anything for us that we like. Actually, large isn't bad. Large is, it's starting to look a little bit too crunchy, but I have dragged the slider all the way to the top. So I think what we need is a combination of medium and large, and I'm going to just let these be strong. Remember, we can back these off later on. I, want, I like to be able to see the effect. I like to be able to see exactly what it's doing to my image so that later on I can come back and say, OK, I understand what it's doing and here's how much of it I want. So if I turn this, this detail on and off, that's definitely adding considerable detail on the top of the prawn here and on the top of the rice here. Um, I'm going to back those off because they are way too strong. And it just takes a second or two to update. But uh, now if I turn the details on and off, that's a much more subtle version of it. It's still way too strong, but but remember, we're working on a separate layer here. So let's go back to our full image. Uh, give it a second for update. There we go. Now we can see the detail we want on that rice, and we can see the detail we want on the top of the prawn there. It's looking pretty good, but we just need to back it off just, for, just to get the right amount of sharpening on there. And I think... It's not sharpening, it's sharpening in structure. Um, and it's, it's just designed to bring out the detail that we know is there. And we really want to make that draw the eye so that people can get a sense of the form of the, of the subject. Um, because obviously, uh, uh, if you've tried sushi, you'll know that it, that, that rice is, is particulate and, it, and it, it has a texture to it. And we want to reflect that in our image. Now, there's one last thing I want to do to this image before we go. Um, uh, our host had stuck this uh, um, this uh, windmill into one of the pieces of sushi, and it just amused me to uh, to see it there. So I took this picture, and that really was the thing that sort of held the whole picture together for me. So I want to just brighten that up. I'm going to make a new layer, and we're going to do another uh, adjustment layer just to brighten that that uh, 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 windmill up. Um, so I'm just going to do a positive exposure. This is a dodge layer, essentially. Now, because I've done it without any layer mask yet, it's affecting the whole image. But I'm just going to use my brush, and I'm going to just blob a, a blob of uh, adjustment on that uh, windmill there. And now I've got, if you look on the layer mask, let's, let's show the layer mask. You can see it's just on the windmill. I just want to brighten up that point there. And remember, this part is already brightened by our first layer, so the stick is already brightened. Um, now I can just tweak how bright I want that that uh, that windmill to be. If it feels like I've just made that too bright, give it a moment, let your eyes adjust. You'll get used to how bright it looks, and then you might even find that you want it a little brighter later on. The other thing we could do here is we could just increase the contrast there a shade. And that might just give us a bit more... Remember, our eyes are not only drawn to brightness, they're also drawn to contrast. So contrast will help draw the eye there, and it means we don't need to go so bright for it to to uh, to compete correctly with the rest of the image. We're talking about balance here between the contrast here and the contrast here. So uh, I think that's looking pretty pretty darn finished. I'm, I'm really liking where that image has gone. I think I might just finish, as always, with a vignette. Let's use our strong vignette that we made in our last video and then back that right off to, say, there. I mean, that's only a 24% version of our strong vignette. Let's just do a side-by-side -side comparison, see how far we've come. Remember, here's our, our very underexposed image, um, and here is our bright, vibrant, well-lit, drawing-the-eye version of our image. I might just back off that... Um, uh, I might just back off that brightening on the, on the windmiller shade there. 
just a little bit too much at the moment. There we go. That's a little better. There's our bright, vibrant, detailed image, which really captures what the food looked like and really gives a... Uh, I think it makes it look properly tasty. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, remember, we can apply this image back to Lightroom by clicking the Apply button up here. But uh, uh, that's all I want to do with this one. Thank you for watching. Uh, go out and check out macfun.com where you can pick up Intensify Pro or there should be a link by now on my uh, website. Um, if you like the videos that we produce on Photo Walkthrough, go and click on the Intensify button on the Photo Walkthrough website and uh, I get a small referral fee. Um, it all helps to keep things running. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.